We're going to go over how we can evaluate a limit by rationalizing the numerator or denominator. We'll do this example first, which is very straightforward, and then we'll do this slightly more complicated example. In each case, we'll be rationalizing the numerator, but it's the same idea whether you're rationalizing the numerator or the denominator. The idea is that we have a function like this, which is discontinuous at the value of interest, in this case x equals zero. But if we rationalize the numerator or denominator, we may be able to remove that discontinuity. Now quickly, if you don't remember what rationalizing is, in general it just means getting rid of a root or a radical. So if we had an expression like 2 divided by the square root of 2, generally we try to keep radicals out of the denominator, the way we would rationalize this would be to multiply by root 2 over root 2. When we do that, we end up with 2 root 2 in the numerator, and then the radicals go away in the denominator, we're just left with 2. Now of course, in the limit that we're starting with over here, it's a little bit more complicated because we don't have the radical all on its own, we also have a minus 1, so we actually have a binomial here, but this isn't too troublesome to take care of. In this situation, in order to rationalize the numerator, all we have to do is multiply by the conjugate of the binomial term that has the radical. The conjugate of a binomial just means flip the sign in the middle. So the conjugate, in this case, is going to be the square root of x plus 1, square root of x plus 1, and then instead of minus 1, will have plus one. Now, this may remind you of a difference of squares factorization. That's really why this works. What we're going to end up getting is the square of this thing minus the square of this thing. Now, of course, we have to multiply by the same thing in the denominator. That way, we're just multiplying by one and not changing the value of our limit. So originally, we couldn't evaluate this limit by substitution, since that would give us a division by zero, but after we carry out all this multiplication, believe it or not, it's all going to work out. So let's do this. In the numerator, we'll have square root of x plus one times square root of x plus one, which is just x plus one. Then we would have square root of x plus one times positive one, and then square root of x plus 1 times negative 1, those will cancel out, and so the only other term we have in the numerator is negative 1 times positive 1, or minus 1. Then in the denominator, we have x times the square root of x plus 1, and then plus x. That's just distributing this x across this binomial. Now, in the numerator, the plus 1 and minus 1 will, of course, cancel out. And so, very nice, we're just left with x. Now, in the denominator, we can factor out an x. We've got an x in this term and an x in this term. So, at this point, we could just cancel out that factor of x. I'll go ahead and just write it to make sure that it's really clear what's going on here. We're factoring out an x. And so, this turns to x multiplied by root x plus 1 plus one. And now we can cancel out those x's. And now we've got a limit we can evaluate by substitution. If we just plug x equals zero into this expression, we are going to get one divided by the square root of one plus one. Or in other words, one half. And that's how we can evaluate a limit by rationalizing the numerator or denominator. Go ahead and give this second example a try yourself. It's a super similar idea, it's just that the factoring we have to do in the denominator is slightly harder to see, but it's very similar. Just as before, the first thing we'll need to do as we attempt to rationalize the numerator, in this case, is multiply by the conjugate. So that's the square root of x plus one plus two. This is really utilizing a difference of squares factorization. So we have to multiply by that in the denominator as well, and let's move on. What do we get? Because this is how a difference of squares is factored, what we'll end up with is just root x plus 1 times root x plus 1, which is x plus 1. The only other term we'll have is negative 2 times positive 2, which is minus 4. The middle two terms, because of the minus 2 and the plus 2, are going to cancel out. And then in the denominator, we've got x minus 3 times this binomial. 
It might be tempting to do all the multiplication there, but you should notice that in the numerator, we have x plus one minus four, which is actually just x minus three. So in fact, we should probably just leave that x minus three out on its own. So in the denominator, we have x minus three times the square root of x plus one plus two. And I guess I don't know what I was talking about saying that this one was harder. It's pretty much exactly the same as far as the mechanics go. So then what will we do? We'll cancel out the x minus threes and then we're pretty much done. At this stage, we can plug in x equals three. That's gonna leave us with one divided by the square root of four, which is two plus two. And so we get one fourth. So it's a pretty cool strategy. Going back to the start, notice if we plugged in x equals three at the start, we would have had a division by zero. I didn't really mention that. Hopefully you noticed that yourself. Make sure you try substituting to solve your limits right from the jump because you don't want to waste time fiddling with it if you could have solved it using substitution from the beginning. But if you can't do it with substitution and you have a radical like this, rationalizing the numerator or denominator is a pretty nifty strategy that sometimes works. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Uh -huh.